All right, everybody. It is September the 4th. Uh, we just got all of our VREB information from our past month of August 2019. Um, every month we're going to do this market update going forward. And today we have an awesome, awesome guest who most of you, most of you people already know. Before I introduce her, um, I just had a quick little story I wanted to share with you about a lesson that we learned the hard way and uh, what you guys can do to you know, avoid our own mistake and, and take advantage of, of our learning curve. So you guys might have seen it on our Instagram stories uh, the last couple of weeks, I guess, or a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we were looking into a six blocks up in Parksville. And oh, just FYI, if you want to follow us on, on Instagram, it's at the underscore reinvestors. Um, but we were looking into the six bucks in in, um, in Parksville, and we went through all of our diligence. We did multiple visits up there. We took multiple contractors. We did an inspection. We were back and forth uh, with the listing agent and the sellers on negotiations, and it was uh, labor intensive as of any kind of you know larger deal, um, larger deal. And um, we ended up getting it under contract at about 906, I think it was. And we estimated there's some sort of renovation cost between 500 and 600,000 uh, because it hadn't been looked after whatsoever. And at the last minute, uh, like literally like 11 o'clock before we had to remove subjects, we ended up pulling the plug on it. And it was really kind of disappointing because it was a really awesome opportunity, awesome location. Uh, but there's just a couple of different risks uh, that we didn't quite like. We didn't quite like the purchase price. Um, even though I think it was the originally listed at like 1.4, we had it at just over nine. Uh, but it didn't quite work with our numbers uh, because of the huge renovation budget. You know, we didn't necessarily love the tenant situation. Um, and there's a couple other things, like there's a foundational crack that we didn't quite like. But anyways, we ended up walking away from that opportunity. And then just yesterday, I think it was, uh, we did our follow-up on the property to make sure that, or to see if it was actually still available or not. Our realtor said that, no, it's been sold um, and closed on. And they told us the sell price, which was, I think, 800 grand. And so for us, having it under contract at just over nine, knowing that it sold about eight, that was even more disappointing to hear. And because I think at, at that number, it probably would have worked for us and we would have moved forward with the project. Um, so the lesson that we learned out of it is at the very end, if we're going to walk away from an opportunity because it doesn't work for one reason or another, maybe be price or terms, um, it doesn't hurt to at least ask. So in that particular case, we could have gone back to the listing agent and said, Hey, you know, we're not interested in this particular agreement with, you know, at 900 and all the other terms that we had in it, but we will close on the deal if it's 825 and just throw a Hail Mary out there and see if it works. Um, because we didn't do that, we didn't get the opportunity. Somebody else came in, probably leveraged our position uh, and their position being on the market for a long time and just said, hey, we know the issues. Here's our best offer, take it or leave it kind of thing. And some buyer probably got a really good deal and uh, is gonna be uh, a great uh, six stores to add to their opportunity. So something you can do is before walking away, just don't hesitate to ask if you can get the, the terms or price that you need to close on the deal. Um, that being said, let's forget about that. Forget about our failure and fail forward with it. Use what we learned out of it to better our future positions um, and, and learn from our mistakes that, that we've made. And hopefully you guys can learn from, from our mistake on that and, uh, and integrate that into the offers you guys make and, and uh, the opportunities that you're seeking. So, Jumping into the actual market details, our guest today, most of you know, Sherry Krause, Greater Victoria Property Group. Um, you're a Victoria real estate agent, you're a successful developer, a longtime investor, you're a mentor for us, and a great resource for any investor of any skill level uh, or knowledge base. Um, thank you so much for being here and sharing some, uh, some info about our market today. Okay, well thanks Steve for inviting me to do this. And um, uh, do you just want me to jump in and start talking about August? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I read through some of the, you know, the, um, the VREB report on it and all the stats and stuff. So take it away and, and we'll see where the conversation goes. Okay. So basically, of course, um, August, generally, historically, August is a slower month um, of the summer. Um, but this month we did have 661 properties sell which was an 11% increase over August of last year. 
um, but it was a decrease um, of 6.4% from what we did in July. So that's kind of normal, that decrease. Uh, the main thing is, is how much more we sold than last August. I think that's an indicator that things are starting to move quite nicely. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, active listings, we ended August at just over 2,800 listings, um, which was um, uh, a decrease over the month of July, which is also a good indicator. You know, for a while there, our listings were creep, creep, creeping up, and um, now they seem to be leveling off a little bit. Um, prices, what's, been our, what's been our historical average? You know, not over the last like th <clears throat> three or four years, but over the last 10 or 15. It was somewhere in the 3,000s, right? Yeah, four, four actually. It's close four, to okay. four, 4,000 listings. So we're still low as far as listings go or inventory. And you'll hear that from people because it's like, can't find what I'm looking for. You know, we, we still see that all the time. It takes a long time. So when a property does come up that fits the criteria, there's like a dog pile because there's so many people looking for the same thing, right? Oh, we want a cash flowing property in Langford. And when one comes up, you're not the only one looking, right? So yeah. it's just, there's a lot there or entry level is another thing that just gets jumped on hugely. So entry level, one sec yeah. in, in Victoria, you know, if, if people are looking or watching this because we have a community up in, up, up, up the Island and a little yeah. bit in Vancouver as well, what would an entry level, single family home be in, in Victoria? Entry level is 600, 650. Yeah. Yeah, okay. for sure. So price wise, um, the prices um, for single family homes um, decreased uh, by 4.6% this August compared to last August. Um, and just slightly less, like, um, like we're talking $11,000 less from July. So it's not huge there when you're like talking about the benchmark price of 850,000, right? Um, and then condos uh, were reversed, right? We had an increase of 3% um, in our benchmark prices over July last year, and but slightly lower. Um, how much lower were we? Um, we were $4,000 lower than, than July. Uh, so, on average in condos. So it's kind of what, what I've said before is that condos kind of trail behind single family homes. So that's why they're still more in demand. Mm -hmm. Also, another thing we've seen with condos is just the price point, right? People maybe can't get into a house, so they settle for a condo. Yeah. And you think like the little bit of that, um, that drop that we saw year over year, which isn't much, um, was just basically because of the new inventory that's on the market or the, the, the higher amount of listings that are on the market? Is that the main indicator, do you think? Yeah, I think so. Like we're coming into, you know, we've kind of hit a balanced market as opposed to a buyer's or seller's market. We are mm -hmm. not a buyer's market yet, and, um, but we're not a seller's market. So we have both buyers and sellers having to adjust slightly mm -hmm. um, to what's actually going on out there. So sellers are having to adjust that, they can't just throw any price on it. It's got to be priced right if they want it to go. Right. And um, conversely, you can't um, expect to get like, you know, there's the odd place where, yes, you can lowball, and depending on the seller circumstances, you may get it. But that's not the norm right now. Like things are still only relatively selling, maybe 10, 15,000 below list is kind mm. of where you can expect to be. If you get more than 15,000 below list, then you, you know, you've done well or else it's priced a little bit higher than it should have been. Gotcha. Great. So, Thank you. Yeah. But I mean, the market is very brisk. Uh, it's been very busy um, through the summer. Our biggest challenge, I think, as realtors is that we're finding a lot of people don't have their financing in order. So we're seeing a lot more deals collapse due to financing. Um, the stress test is definitely taking its toll. Um, so definitely if you're wanting to get something, make sure you've got your financing in order because <clears throat> they're getting really sticky if you want too long for subject removal. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm glad you said that because we did a, we did a blog post, um, geez, probably like a year ago now, um, about some of the best ways to take advantage or, or invest in a hot market. 
And my favorite out of all those different pieces that we talked about was follow up. And you just mentioned it there where there's been a lot of, you know, whether it be entry level or on the higher end of things or multifamily or, or whatever, if there's been multiple pieces or multiple people fall through or, or, or contracts collapse and you don't follow up, you're missing a huge opportunity. So the way that we do things is we always like track where all of our offers are just on an Excel sheet and we track like mm -hmm. the, the listing, um, you know, some of the details around it. And then when we did our last follow up and we always do like a follow up about two weeks or so after like we walked away or, or went through the property or found out that it had an, uh, uh, an accepted offer on it. And then we always work with our realtor like yourself to, um, to remain in contact with the listing agent um, yeah. on like when subjects on that existing offer um, are removed so that we can yeah, follow exactly. like, that day or the day after and say, Hey, if it fell through, that gives us a really good leverage point to come in and be like, yo, you had a couple of offers collapse because of financing. Finance is not an issue for us because we're investors. We're already to rock and roll. Here's either, you know, great terms or a great price that works for everybody. And um, following up has probably been one of the biggest success marks for us and we've gotten some of our favorite properties from just following up yeah i mean i always like to have if i know that they're interested in the i've got a client who's interested in the property it's always let me know if things look like they're going sideways maybe even before they actually do go sideways and then boom you can be right in there yeah. or if they think it's going sideways you can do a backup offer um so that you're right there um already so on that note, can you just describe what a backup offer is and the, the details of that real quick? Yeah. So a backup offer is basically you go through and you negotiate it. You're in second position. So that offer doesn't really become binding until they're no longer obligated to the first offer. Um, so it means that you're automatically in there. You've already negotiated your price. You will have subject removal time after that first offer falls. If it falls, if it doesn't fall, you're, you know, you're not in play anyway. But if it falls, um, then you're right there already and just boom, you just automatically move into any due diligence that's gonna cost you money. You may have done some that doesn't cost money prior to. And um, so that's kind of the, the major, you know, thing to look at there. And then the other thing that I would um, talk about in regards to that is just that the um, backup offer puts the first offer kind of in a uh, tight situation in the sense that the first offer cannot go back and renegotiate the price, mm -hmm. right? So they're, they're really locked and they're tied. They, you've tied their hands, basically. They can't renegotiate a price. They can't make any changes to the contract. It voids that contract and automatically goes to the backup. And so the backup- that can work in your favor. Yeah, totally. And puts the, the other people like under a lot of pressure to, to get their diligence done on, on time and, um, and to be satis uh, satisfied with, with the price and all the terms and whatnot. Um, yeah. The backup offer that you put in place, does that, is it a, like our particular offer with our particular details or do we absorb some of the information or details from the, the previous? You know, you know nothing about the first offer. So you just go in like you're writing an offer without knowing anything, just a straight offer, what you think you're going to have time to do your due diligence. Right. And, and hopefully there isn't another backup offer so you can renegotiate because that's a, that's a big thing. Most people do go back and renegotiate once they've done, their due diligence and they're looking at it and go, it just doesn't work at these numbers. Then like you said, the lesson you learned, you go back, you check it out uh, and you find out whether there's any movement or not because yeah. you're going to, you're ready to walk away. So there's no harm in asking. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah. And saying this is what it needs to be if we want to make this work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. uh, back to the numbers that you, that you want to have uh, share anything else? Um, no, not really. I mean, the numbers, that's kind of the basics of what the numbers are. Um, really, I think it's just uh, understanding the market. Now that we're coming into September, people are kind of back into their fall thing. We'll see a bit of a surge again. It was a very busy weekend, active weekend hmm. um, for buyers. And a lot of realtors have new listings ready to go this week. So we're back into that surge before we hit the December kind of slouch. <laughs> yeah. So 
are you expecting more of a traditional fall, I guess, like with September, October, November being fairly active and more listings coming on? Um, yeah, I sort of see that. However, let me preface that with saying that right now the market is kind of all over the map and it's really hard to predict. Um, I still use the word random. It's very random. Uh, some places will sell in a flash on the first day and other places lag that you don't think should lag their price well. There's just not a buyer for that particular, um, whatever that property is at that time. Right. Yeah. Okay. I'm looking forward to fall. I always think that fall is um, beneficial, like hunting grounds, I guess, for an investor. Um, I think that, you know, the back to school aspect, you know, people obviously don't want to move um, and displace their, their kids, but I think that there's, there's always this opportunity for, um, for growing your portfolio, I'll say, in that, that prep time before Christmas. And yeah. I, I, and too, like, don't forget about December and Christmas. It's a great hunting ground because yeah. people don't have their houses on the market in December unless they're serious about selling, mm -hmm. you know, because they're having to keep it ready for showings while they've got all the Christmas stuff going on and kids programs and, and all that sort of thing. So December can be a good place to, or a good time to find, um, better deals, I think. Totally. And like in this space where we're September, October, November kind of thing, nobody wants to move during that Christmas time either. No. So I think that gives us as investors a really good leverage point saying we will work with you on whatever terms you want. You can close tomorrow being September mm -hmm. the 5th or in the new year if you really wanted to, if it was later in the yeah. fall that we were making that offer and really work with the seller to get our price, but their terms. But because their we're terms. investors, that totally works. And yeah. that that's a really great um, strategy for that we've used in the past for, especially on, um, on off market deals. But yeah. And I'm, I, you know, we do this too. I'm sure you have where we actually leave the dates open on a contract an offer mm -hmm. yeah. for the seller just to pick whatever they want. Totally. Um, that's a great strategy, especially if you're in a multiple offer situation, it gives the seller more control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so through like you're extremely active in all over, um, I was going to say the GTA, but the VTA, I guess, no, uh, the, the yeah, Victoria area. Victoria. Yeah. Yeah. G yeah. And, um, so are, are you seeing any kind of like particular niches that investors might want to take a look at, whether it be, you know, luxury furnished condos or, um, heritage conversions or soup, single family homes. Is there a particular thing that you've seen recently that, you know, really fits kind of like the investor box? Um, no, not, I, I wouldn't say that particular because it really depends on the investor and what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. So, um, there's a huge appetite out there from investors, I would say, but you know, some of them, it depends on what the strategy is and what they want. Some just want five threes, right? Five bedrooms, three bathrooms, upper, lower. That's all they're interested in. Yeah. Um, I've got, uh, people who really just want to do heritage, uh, restoration. Um, you know, possibly raising a house or digging out a basement. I've got others where, you know, they're out of town buyers in particular really like pre-sales. They like pre-sales, get into the market. If they can do it furnished and have it hands off, they're, you know, they're great with that too. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much what the, what, what area it's all about. What is the goals and objectives of the individual investor? that's really what determines what's going on. I love two things you said there. One is all about the individual, the investor. And I love that that's the approach that you take when you work with your clients mm -hmm. um, because there's no just like cookie cutter type solution for investors. And nope. <laughs> I think there is a little bit in terms of like this, your regular home buyer, um, you know, there's a little bit more of an emotional pull on that. Yeah. Um, and the other thing was the pre-sales. I think there's a really cool opportunity still in Victoria anyways, Vancouver. Maybe, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I just got away from that now. I think two years ago would have been like a no-brainer. Yeah, but I still yeah. think that Victoria is a really solid market. Um, and we did, uh, Kyle Green and I did a really cool interview like this one, all about pre-sales. So you can see that either on our Facebook channel or on our YouTube page. Uh, it's about mm -hmm. a half hour long and just packed of, of uh, value and, and tangible kind of takeaways that you can do in, in pre-sales. 
Um, a pre-sale, in my opinion, can be a very passive investment for uh, uh, an investor um, because you you have a, a long time frame where you're seeing your money grow, but you're not actually having to do anything. Mm -hmm. And we, we have pre-sales now where you only have to put 5% down as a deposit. Your deposit is 5%. That's all you put up and you just watch it go for 18 months, right? Yeah. That's awesome. And like, yeah. it's rare that you can get into any kind of real estate opportunity at 5% as an investor. Mm -hmm. Typically you're going to have to partner with somebody else who's going to, who's going to move into the, uh, into the yeah. property. Yeah. yeah. So, awesome tip. Yeah. So it's, um, yeah, there's some really great pre-sale opportunities here in the greater Victoria area. It's great. Yeah. yeah. And for, for more opportunities, whether it be through pre-sales or heritage conversions, income properties, flipping, whatever, if it's related to real estate and real estate investing, uh, we both do meetups. Ours is September 17th, yeah. the third Tuesday of each month. Your guys' is the last Tuesday of each month? The last Tuesday, so it'll in this for September, it's the 24th. Awesome, the 24th of September. Uh, both are on Meetup, I think uh, Eventbrite and our Facebook groups um, share the details on yeah. it as well. Uh, super awesome community, uh, always great yeah. content. Uh, every time that we either host one or attend yours, I learn something. Um, and we're also doing uh, another two day workshop on the 28th and 29th of September, all about creating new equity. And, and leveraging uh, your equity to reinvest into more real estate. So check those out on our events page on the reinvestors.ca. And if you, anybody wants more information for uh, sharing her team of experts, um, what's the best way that they can get in touch with you? Um, yeah, so either email, which is ccrows at shaw.ca, or uh, give me a call 250-213-6014. That's 250-213-6014. Yeah. Awesome. My, Email, yeah, phone number. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people do that these days. <laughs> I know, but it's, it's still, it's the easiest. There's nothing, nothing like voice to voice where you can actually hear their tone and not mis misunderstand things. And you know, you're just there or face to face, like it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I highly encourage anybody who's looking to either buy or sell, uh, whether it be investment property or not, to contact uh, Sherry and her team. They are absolutely the best people to work with in, in Victoria. Um, and if you guys have any questions related to real estate, uh, the market itself, or more specifically real estate investing, uh, get in touch with us. Uh, there's 3investors.ca, there's our Facebook group, there's an Instagram page. You guys have an awesome social media as well. Uh, so just reach out to us and, and we're, we are here to serve and to, to benefit uh, to you guys and to educate you guys. You know, it's our mission statement to financially educate a million people and inspire them to invest into real estate so you can live more fulfilled life. Um, and we're really, really excited to kick back up into our meetups. Uh, we, you know, we take July and August off, um, you know, because people are, are barbecuing and it gives us a time to recharge. And we have a really awesome lineup going through the rest of the year and our, our holiday Christmas mixer as well uh, in December where we're hopefully going to double our last uh, donation to the International Network of Hearts, which was 3700 last year. So I'd love to get above six, uh, maybe even push the, the $7,000 mark. Um, but uh, more information on that coming soon. And th uh, Sherry, thank you so much for, for sharing the details and giving me your insight onto our market. And I just hope you have an awesome, awesome day. And we'll see you again uh, in the near future. Okay, sounds good. Thanks, Steve. Bye. Thanks.